So as you guys know, I introduced you guys to my new Bernice Mountain Dog puppy, Bigsley. Um, it was a big deal for me. It's my very first puppy. I wanted a puppy for about like four to five years. I, mean, I remember one day waking up and Brian saying, hey babe, I think we should get a puppy. I was ecstatic. Like I was so happy and I just, I just couldn't believe that he agreed and even said yes and even initiated the conversation of having a puppy and, or getting a puppy. So I found Bigsley within probably a week of searching for a puppy. Um, I remember, as you guys seen in the vlog, it was the best day ever. He was amazing. Sadly, on July 9th, um, Bigsley passed away in the morning. I stopped filming. I kind of shut down. I kind of didn't tell anybody other than my like family. So we got our Bernie Mountain Dog. He was completely taken care of, like all of his shots. He was up to date. Absolutely nothing wrong with him at all. I remember one day waking up and he started limping on his back left leg and I was like, oh wow, that's weird. So I did a lot of research, which getting my first puppy, I've done research a lot, like before I brought him home, which crate to get, which food to give him, everything. And like that limping, it, it seemed to be like a normal thing. These dogs have panelsotitis or something like that, but it's growing pains. These dogs are, big boned, they're big breed dogs, and they grow rapidly. Now, Bigsley grew really quick. I remember when we first got him, he was 23 pounds, and four months in, he was like almost 70 pounds. So he was growing really quickly. We didn't know why. We just kind of thought it was like a normal thing. And I remember bringing him into the vet, and the vet saying like, oh no, that's normal. I thought maybe he sprained something. Um, I, I didn't know why. I he doesn't jump off anything and he just looks so sad and so helpless and i built such a connection with bigsley that it was really difficult for me um to see him in pain looking back at it now i kind of uh, we like it was just a waste i we should have got a better vet we should have done more research after going there countless amount of times it first started off with like the limping which were growing pains and then it moved to diarrhea and then he was fine and then diarrhea came back again we got met him medicine for that and then it started being limping again on the, the back left leg and then that moved to the back right leg and then throughout the week it started moving from his back left back right leg his two front legs to the point where at the end of it he was unable to walk unable to stand we didn't know what was going on he was already on medication for his diarrhea he was on probiotics he was on joint supplements he had a digestive food change which all these things are super expensive when i tell you we spent probably a few grand on the puppy and then afterwards like a total of ten thousand on vet visits it was insane i woke up one morning and he was just acting so weird he was so hot acting so weird being like 70 pounds I picked him up barely could pick him up I called an uber jumped in the uber and brought him to the ER visit that visit I spent a total of six hours there from midnight until 6 a.m. I remember when 6 a.m. hit we were still in the waiting room and then the lady at the front desk said I, to I asked her, I was like, hey, our real vet is opening in half an hour. I think I should just take him there. And she said it would probably be a lot more expensive. So I took him into our normal vet right after spending six hours in, in the ER. And they were like, oh my God, his temperature's high. He had a hundred in what, 103, 104 temperature, and they were like, oh, it's all right. If it gets over 105, take them back to the ER so they can put them on like antibiotics and all this other stuff. That was like the first mistake because I wish that I would have kept him in the ER. When it came down to everything and when a problem hit the fan, like this vet just, I didn't think was equipped to handle the problems that we were dealing with. Um, I remember the last day before he passed away, um, his temperature was 103, which is a little bit high for a dog. 105 is like seizing. Brian's a doctor, a, pediat a pediatrician, so we kind of did everything that he normally would do in the hospital to bring down a temperature of a kid. So we wrapped him in cold towels, put ice on his like forehead underneath his paws. We went out and bought fans to put those on them. We gave him a cold shower. 
that was our like last thing that our last resort was to put him in a cold shower and just like wrap him up and keep him cool to try to bring his temperature down. Um, that didn't work. Um, and at this point he wasn't even walking. He wasn't eating. He was barely drinking. It was just a horrible situation. Prior to this, we went back into the vet and they took more x-rays and she found out that there were like some corrosion in the bones, like in the joints, which could be a normal thing for large breed dogs because um, their bones are growing rapidly. And there was an antibiotic that we could put him on, but since he has just been taking a different type of antibiotics for his diarrhea, we had to wait the three days because if you overlap the medication, it's lethal for dogs. The vet said that she would like to wait five days, but since he was declining really quickly, we would wait just three days. Um, the, the day he passed away was his first day off of his diarrhea medication, and we were just waiting in, to put him on the antibiotics to help him and to start curing the bone problems that was going on. We didn't make it there, but um, it's been a while now since this all has happened, for, so forgive me, um, but I remember being super exhausted. Um, I remember being emotionally drained, and I remember telling Brian, like, babe, can you just go to sleep with him? We had an air mattress in the living room, sleep next to him, and I went to bed. I remember thinking in bed, I was like, Brian is a, a heavy sleeper, and he is a very hot sleeper, so I was thinking, I was like, oh God, like, if something would happen, I don't know if Brian will wake up. He's been working a lot. He's a heavy sleeper. But then on top of it, I know that he's going to be holding him while he's sleeping. And I know Brian's hands are really hot and it's going to bring up his temperature. And once a dog hits 105 degrees, like their body temperature, they start going into seizures and shock. I remember getting up at 6 o'clock. I slept for like four hours and I like ran into the living room to see if he was better because... I just wanted him to be better at this point and I wanted like things to just like go away. I when I tell you like this whole time frame of like when all this stuff happened, we were flying to Los Angeles to look for a house. My mom was at our house watching the dog. My mom went home, my mom came back. We moved from one apartment to another apartment, packed up everything so we could move to California for J Brian's new job for my new school but um, all of this on top of like everything that's happening with the puppy it was so much I couldn't even think about filming YouTube I'm not the kind of person like when something bad happens my first instinct is to pick up a camera my initial reaction when things are happening really bad around me is to just shut down close off and just close down like I I go into like this little dark deep hole. I remember when all this stuff happened, it was like nonstop. It felt like I was like underwater trying to gasp for air, but like somebody was constantly holding me down. And I remember waking up and I'm going into the room and he was just like lifeless. Like he was still breathing. He just wouldn't move his eyes. He wouldn't open up his eyes. And I remember I screamed at Brian and said, get up, we need to leave. I threw on clothes, grabbed him, ran downstairs. We, we jumped into our car. And then I remember I was driving, running red lights, running through stop signs. I was just going. Like that was my initial reaction was get him, put him in the car and go. And I remember like Brian was in the back holding him and I just heard Brian start crying cause like he started having seizures in the back while Brian was holding him and I whipped the car into the emergency room which was like a half an hour away from our house I got there probably within 20 minutes and I remember like the lady coming out saying like he's not gonna make it do you want us to take him off life support do you want us to keep him on and we were like yeah keep him on do whatever you have to do and they try to resuscitate him he his heart started beating after a while but then it stopped again um, it was just the worst experience I've ever experienced in my entire life. Um, I knew Brian and I were distraught. Um, we were like really messed up for a while. Um, it was really difficult. And I think it was also really difficult for Brian because he is a doctor. He saves people's lives on a daily basis. He, this is like what he does for a living. And to know that we took on the responsibility of of like taking care of something that was living and that we weren't able to protect him or save him 
or make the right decisions, like, it really bothered us a lot. And I know that, like, um, it's hard to say, like, we need to make the right decisions because, like, we did everything that we could have done. We should have brought him to the ER probably two days before. We should have probably just skipped his normal vet. But us being first dog owners, we really didn't know um, what to do. Um, I asked, like, the ER, I was like, "What would, is there anything we could have done differently? And she was like, no, you, you've been to the vet t more than 20 times in one month while all this stuff was happening. Um, you were with him, you given him the best life and all that stuff. So it's a little bit difficult because like I upload that video and I didn't want to take it down because like that's the way I can remember him. And, um, but it's really hard because like sometimes you guys keep commenting and saying like, how's Bigsley doing? Um, and I just feel like ashamed to say like he's not here anymore. Um, it's, I, um... Yeah, like I feel embarrassed. I didn't want to tell anybody. Um, I told one friend, and she told everybody in our building about like him, like him dying, and then like people asking us questions and stuff like that. I remember I shut myself in my apartment for like a few days because I was just like I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to tell anybody. And I remember someone came up and said, "I'm so sorry for your loss," and I was like, "Oh, I was like, how did you know?" And like you, it was obvious that somebody has somebody told her. Like it was like the, it, like spread through our building like wildfire, and she was like, "Well, it's apparent. Like we noticed that you weren't taking him for walks like you normally do. Like we used to take Bigsley out for a walk probably like ten times a day, every couple hours. Take him outside. Um, it was hard. It was hard, and it was even worse for me to know that I had to come on here and try to justify of where he is and." And stuff like that so yeah like um we lost our first our first puppy bigsley he was amazing um yeah it was really difficult i'm so sorry this like story is probably all over the place but it was a while ago and it's a sensitive topic for me but i wanted to come on and say something because i know that a few of you guys watched the video watch the vlog and you, a lot of you guys people still comment and i think i'm getting subscribers from that video um, i wanted to incorporate him more on this channel but it just didn't pan out that way um it, just, it didn't pan out that way um but um a week after that we decided that we wanted to try again so we got another new little Bernice Mountain Dog, Jude, which is his brother. Um, we asked the doctor, we talked to a few different people and asked, was it too soon? And at the end of the day, we decided that, like, we got Bigsley knowing that we are ready for a puppy. We've waited five years. We've been together for seven years. We've waited five years to get a dog. Um, we had a lot of love to give and we prepared mentally, physically, we prepared our life. We went out and bought a house because we knew we were gonna have this big dog that needed a backyard, that needed a lot of room. Like everything that we did was around the dog after we got the puppy and we knew we had a lot of love to give. So we went out and got another burner and I can tell you like the first We've had him now for a while. Um, he is five months old. I'm gonna, I'll let you guys meet him in a little bit. Um, he's taking a nap right now, but yeah. The first day I started feeling instant regret and I remember the first day of getting Bigsley, like I would take pictures of him, post him on his Instagram, and like I was really excited, really happy. And I remember getting Jude for the first day, I kind of was like, oh, I don't feel like First of all, I didn't feel like I could just share him with people because everybody will ask questions and it was too hard to bring up the, what happened. But I didn't have that initial connection that I did with Bigsley, with Jude, um, even to the point where the day number two after having Jude, I had Brian call up the breeder and say that we made a mistake because I just didn't think I was ready or I was scared. Just like everything that happened, I didn't feel like it was right. Luckily, 
we didn't go through with giving him back to the breeder or finding him a new home. We still have him. He's amazing. He's not Bigsley, but he's almost as perfect as Bigsley is. He has his own personality that's completely different than Bigsley. Bigsley was so loyal to me. He would follow me everywhere. His eyes were just like so big, his eyelashes. He was just the cutest dog ever. And I remember he wouldn't leave my side. Brian, my mom, he loved me. He would not leave my side. And Jude, on the other hand, is super lovable. He loves everybody. And the difference between Bigsley and Jude, Bigsley didn't like to snuggle. Bigsley was so calm and Bigsley bite it a lot. Jude, on the other hand, he loves to snuggle. He loves to sit on you. He loves to cuddle with you. He loves everybody. And Jude is way more mischievous than Bigsley was. And he is very curious. So, yeah. I'm going to go and grab him so you guys can meet Jude. Um, keep in mind, he's five months. But he's getting big. But he's not growing as rapidly as Bigsley grew. And I think that this Jude is going to be a small Bernice compared to Bigsley. Um, there's somebody in Santa Barbara that we met at the beach, and they um, they had a Bernice Mountain Dog, and their dog was the same age, born on the same day as Jude, but he was a little bit bigger than Jude, so I feel like Jude's going to be a little guy, a little chunky guy, even though Jude's mom was 140 pounds. But, yeah, wait right here. I'm going to go grab him. All right, guys, are you ready to see? Come here. Come here. All right. Ugh. Okay. So this right here is Jude. Say hi, Jude. Say hi. We named, I named him after the Beatles song because I just thought it was so, it was perfect. Now, growing pains start from, I believe, four months to seven months. He's only started limping once and it went away. Normal growing pains stop after a day or a couple days. His, his limping and the back leg only goes for one day and it stops and it only happened once. So we're really excited we have him and I'm sorry to give you guys the bad news on what happened to his brother. But um, I felt like I owed it to you guys who have watched the other video, the vlog, and who subscribe to this channel or who just are w wondering what has happened to Bigsley. So, yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching and expect to see him in more videos. Hi. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.